الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعه الى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خذ العفو وامر بالعرف واعرض عن الجاهلين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بشروا ولا يسروا ولا تعسروا بشروا ولا تنفروا او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حامدا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد respected brothers elders and sisters in islam we thank and praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tremendously for blessing us and providing us this opportunity today to come on this blessed and sacred day of Jumu'ah to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us graciously and bountifully both in dunya and in akhirah. One Bedouin once came to Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and ask him the question sif li akhlaq nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam o ali you are so close with the nabi of allah you have very close proximity to the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do me a favor and highlight the qual the qualities the character and the characteristics of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to me. I would like to know the qualities of my Nabi. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked this Bedouin the question, Awa ta'riful ad? Do you know how to count? Do you know how to count? This Bedouin said, of course, yes. I do know how to count. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu then said to him, Can you count for me the items of this world? The things of this world? The Bedouin replied, Mata'ud dunya la yu'ad. The things of this world and the items of this world are so enormous they cannot be counted. How can you ask me to count the things of this world? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, You are telling me that you are unable to count and highlight the items of this world. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared it to be minute and insignificant. And you are asking me, to count, to tell you, and to enumerate the characteristics of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be sub sublime and super. Allah declared it. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are on the highest station of nobility. The Urdu poet, those who know Urdu, probably they can follow me. 
جو اردو پوئٹ سیز مل نہیں سکتا کہی ان کا جواب مل نہیں سکتا ہے کہی ان کا جواب مصطفیٰ کو رب نے رکھا ہے لا جواب سبحان اللہ what it means the poet is saying I simply cannot find the appropriate words to aptly describe the impeccable life of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how can I possible find the words how can I possible find the words when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only created one like him when Allah only created one like him how can I find the words the Urdu poet continue by saying پہلے مجھے دیکھ مجھے جی بھر کے دیکھ لو پہلے مجھے ان کو جی بھر کے دیکھ لو اے فرشتو پھر مجھ سے لینا حساب او انجلز I have a plea and I have a request after my death and before my accountability before my hisab on the day of qiyamah when I stand before Allah and my eyes and these eyes have the opportunity to look at the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then O oh angel you pause for a while Pause for a while and give me the opportunity to just look at my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to my satisfaction. You have no idea. I have been longing for this moment. This is a moment I have been longing for. So embrace the teachings of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you an eye and undescribable and impeccable Jannah insha'Allah. Because we are in the month of Rabi al-Awwal, I would request each and everyone sitting here, please do two things. Do two things. One, find a book on the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to read it in this month of Rabi al-Awwal. Find an authentic book on the seerah of the Nabi of Allah and read it. Know who our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And secondly, in this month, send durood and salam in abundance on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single day, your durood and salam should not be lesser than a thousand times. Every day in this month of Rabi al-Awwal, on our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Jibra'il alayhi salam, he came into the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have the capability to count the droplets of rain that falls from the sky. I am able to do that. Every time rain falls, from the very inception until Qiyamah, whatever amount of rain will fall on earth, I have the capability to count each droplet of rain. Ya Rasulullah, I have the ability to count each grain of sand, each grain of sand on earth. Ya Rasulullah, I have the ability to count each leaf, each leaf on a tree, each leaf on a tree, whether it's on the tree or it falls from the tree. I have that ability. Ya Rasulullah, I have the ability to count every droplet of rain in the rivers and the oceans of the world. But O oh, Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when one of your ummati, when one of your followers send durood and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the amount of mercy that descends upon them from Allah 
I am incapable to come to the amount of mercy that Allah descends upon them. I can count the droplets of rain. I can count every leaf on a tree. I can count every grain of sand. But when you and I say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we recite durood and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah sends so much of his rahmah upon us that Jibreel alayhi salam said, I myself cannot count those amount of mercies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends upon you. What is the value of sending durood and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once? How many people right now are living on planet earth? Maybe six billion, seven billion? Would every person minimum, minimum, there are two angels. There are more, but let's say minimum, kiram and katibin, the one on the right side and the one on the left side. At right side are good and are bad, and this is, this is with every one. There are countless amounts of angels that are assigned for various tasks in dunya, in this world, various tasks. I don't want to get into that. There are countless amounts of malaika in the first heaven, in the second heaven, in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven heavens. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the amount of angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And when you and I send the rule on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all these angels, the angels that are with us, the angels that are assigned to the tasks in the world, the angels in every heaven, make dua of Allah's rahmah on each and every one of us. Can you imagine that? Imagine the amount of gazillions of angels and the gazillions of du'as of those angels you and I receive every time we send salatu wa salam on our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the many formula to the success of the mission of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his high level of personal discipline coupled with a sense of concession, allowance, and accommodation for others. Again, I'm going to say it. One of the success of the mission of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what? Is his high level of personal discipline. Personal discipline, but along with that, Coupled with that, a sense of concession, allowance, and accommodation for others. Sadly today, we adopt leniency for ourselves and we impose harshness on others. What do we do? It was the opposite with the Nabi of Allah. Harshness upon yourself, leniency with others. Today, we... We want leniency with ourselves and we deal harshly with others. If you are strict on yourself, good and well, be my guest. But the teachings of our Islam and the teachings of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is do not be strict on others. Be super disciplined upon yourself. But be soft and lenient when it comes to others. Imagine when it comes to the acts of ibadat, and I'm talking about ibadat, be lenient with others in the acts of ibadat, and you can be strict on yourself. Imagine the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to stand in the night in long rak'ats of salah, where his blessed feet would become swollen. But, when it comes to us, it was completely different. Completely different. The ayah that I have recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Take to forgiveness and command what is good. 
If you look into the tafsir of the Quran, the mufassirin and the commentators of the Quran have explained the word af here very differently. What it means in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in actuality, Allah is telling, uh, telling His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take from the people what they can do averagely, even if it is of a mediocre level. Take from the people what they can do in ibadat. I'm not talking about fara'id here. Fara'id we have to do. We are talking about the other acts of ibadat. Take from them what they can do on an average level. Don't go averagely on yourself and go hard on people. If you only want to eat organic and gluten-free, then be my guest. Don't impose that on others. Don't impose things upon people that is beyond their abilities and capabilities. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is told not to expect high expectations in actions, in act of ibadah from the people. Hadith comes in Tirmidhi and in Bukhari and in Abu Dawood. There was one Sahabi by the name of Ma'qal bin Yasar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This Sahabi, he had his sister wed to another Sahabi. He had his sister wed to this Sahabi. The union lasted for a while and then the marriage was dissolved. And eventually this Sahabi gave talaq and divorce to his wife. And he did not revoke her during her waiting period. He did not come back to her. Today, unfortunately, there are many men who abuse the privilege of talaq. The women are in an abused marriage and the men still want to keep them. They don't want to give them talaq. They don't want to divorce them. One sister, she came to us and she said, I am ready to leave Islam. I am ready to leave Islam and have another religion just to get freed from my husband. He does not want, to, he's, he is oppressive and he does not want to give talaq. So I am ready. Can you imagine how serious is that statement that somebody is ready to give up their deen and give up their Islam just to find peace? We only have two options in that way. One is either you keep them with respect or number two, you let them go with dignity. Sayyidina Luqman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, subhanallah, he tells his son, he advised his son and he said, إِذَا دَعَتْكَ قُدْرَتَكَ عَلَى ذُلْمِ النَّاسِ فَتَذَكَّرْ قُدْرَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ Subhanallah. What did he say to his son? When your ego starts whispering to you to abuse. When your ego starts whispering to you to abuse, then remind yourself of Allah's authority over you. Understand. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all in control over you. Remember that. When your ego, what? Whispers to you to abuse others. With words and actions, remember the qudrat of Allah. Remember the authority of Allah over you. Allah is in control. So what happens after the idda was over, the waiting period, the husband and the wife, they began having feelings again for each other. So he wanted to do the right thing, so he came to Maqlib al Yasar, who was the guardian of the sister, and he said, I want to remarry your sister. Remember, only one talaq was given. So he said, I want to remarry your sister. Maqlib al Yasar said, First and foremost, I did the dignified thing. I got her married, and then you divorced her. I will never ever give her in marriage to you again. I will never let her marry you again. When he said this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayat of the Qur'an. Read Surah Al-Nisa or Surah Baqarah. It is in Surah Baqarah. 
wa idha talaqtumun nisa fabalaghna ajalahunna fala ta'duluhunna an yankihna azwajahunna idha taradaw bainahum bil ma'ruf when two people are divorced and the idda has ended then there is no problem for one spouse to remarry the other spouse when this ayah reached the sahabi who had said no in the beginning i will not allow my sister to remarry you immediately he submitted and he said if this is the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then i am ready to accept it what this ayah is telling us it is telling us when something is principally permissible when something is principally permissible don't be harsh in prohibiting it when it is principally permissible yet eating with our fingers is sunnah eating with our head covered is sunnah eating sitting is sunnah all of this is sunnah well and good but if you see a man eating with a spoon or a fork do not criticize him do not criticize him you don't know what condition he may be in imam ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi has mentioned something amazing and he said kun kal mu'min yatlub al a'dha wa la takun kal munafiq yatlub al uyun allahu akbar kun kal mu'min be like a believer who looks for excuses from people a believer don't look for faults a believer looks for excuses but today we look for faults a person has 99 good and one bad he does something wrong you take him to the cleaners whoop and you clean him completely one one something wrong he did you just overlook all the other goodness he did you took that wrong and you start running with it yeah. so kun kal mu'min be like the believer who look for excuses when it comes to a mu'min do not be like the munafiq and the hypocrite that looks for oyub and looks for flaws trivialize your own good deeds and magnify the good of others trivialize your own good but magnify the good of others consider others to be true muslims while you fear yourself to be a hypocrite fear that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully allah has concealed those actions that are accepted whatever actions we do and they are accepted by allah allah did not show them to us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed them why so that every single person can remain in a state of panic until he dies we all did the exam but the results we don't know the results every single person has a different story to attract allah's mercy and his entrance into jannah everyone has a different story everyone's entrance into jannah will not be on the same deed some people are good in praying some people are good in fasting some people are good in giving sadaqat some people are good in feeding others but every good deed attracts the mercy of allah so when you go into jannah and you say brother how did you come to jannah in jannah what good deed did you do maybe you might hear the answer i didn't do anything much there was just a branch in the road and i removed that branch allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved that act for me and allah gave me jannah oh what did you do to enter into jannah oh i will i used to kiss my mother and my father's hand every morning and every evening because of that allah gave me jannah so we don't know on which act of who's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them jannah and who should attack attracts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy we don't know that right so do not trivialize the good of anyone last incident sayyidina muad ibn this hadith is in bukhari sayyidina muad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was once leading salah it was salatul isha and when he would lead the salah he would pray long rakats of salah long rakats of salah one night he led salatul isha and he recited a long surah 
So in Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, he recited a long surah in that Isha Salah. One Sahabi came, he joined in the Salah. The Salah was long. He know he can't make it, so he left the Salah. And he went and prayed by himself. And he completed his Salah by himself, and then he left. Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he heard this. That this man, he prayed, he joined him, and then he left. He prayed his own Salah. So Sayyidina Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu said, This man is a munafiq. He is a hypocrite. Why did he do that? This incident reached the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It reached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let me don't tell you who Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu was. What caliber of Sahaba. He was a legend among Sahaba. When Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was ready to pass on the baton, for Khilafah, he made six people mashura. He said, you six people decide. And he said to them, if Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu was alive, he had already passed away. He said, if Mu'ad radiallahu anhu was alive, I didn't need to put six people. I would have appointed him right away as the leader of the Khalifa of the Muslims. And he would say, you know why? If Allah would ask me why on the day of Qiyamah, I will tell Allah, oh Allah, I would have appointed that person who your Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said that he is the leader of the ulama on the day of Qiyamah. The leader of the scholars on the day of Qiyamah. That's Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu anhu. And Mu'az radiallahu anhu called the Sahabi a munafiq. He said, you are a munafiq, you are a hypocrite. Why did you do that? This went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallam called the Sahabi and he said, is it true? Did you do that? He said, yes. The Sahabi began explaining and he said, Ya Rasulullah, we are laborers. We work very hard in the day. We plant plants in our farms and we irrigate the land and we work with our hands the entire day. And we get very tired by the evening. And we come, still come for Salatul Isha. But this day, Mu'az radiallahu anhu, he led a long salah, and I could not take it. And this is what Mu'az radiallahu anhu said about me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Mu'ad bin Jabal. What kind of a sahabi? A legend. He called him and he said, Afattanun anta ya Mu'ad? Afattanun anta ya Mu'ad? Three times. Afattanun anta Mu'ad? Ya Mu'ad? O oh, Mu'ad, are you causing corruption among the people? Are you causing corruption? If you have to lead Isha, read wa shams wa sabbih isma rabbik al-a'la. Accommodate people. Accommodate people. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi mentioned, when you, are lead, uh, when you are praying your own salah, not with jama'ah, but your own salah, read as long as you want. Be strict on yourself. As long as you want. But when you are doing it, Amongst people, consider the women, consider the elderly, consider the children, consider the old, consider the weak. So respected brothers and elders, this is from the sunnah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to have rifq. We have to have gentleness and kindness with people. We want to be strict. Be strict on yourself. Don't be strict on others. Give leniency to other people. You want to win the heart of someone else? then you will win the heart of people with love. You will win the heart of people with tenderness, love, and affection. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun malikum barra'u fur rahim fa astaghfiru. Innahu huwa